Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman, the Combat System.com. We're at the Highest Stone Academy in North Hollywood, Go Karts Place, one of the best overall grappling schools you could be at. Okay, today, I'm gonna talk about hammer locks. Okay, hammer locks, hammer locks, hammer locks. People forget to do it. Um, I watched RFA, I was at RFA covering it the other day. Uh, Cal Poly, no, 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 one of the, uh, Steve Mako, uh, wrestler, great wrestler from eighth um, American Top Team. He looked like he was gonna do it as a wrestler instinctually in the first round of his fight against uh, Lou Pauly. Um, other hammerlock, Phil Davis in the UFC actually finished the hammerlock. Guys, anytime someone headlocks you, you should be looking at hammerlocks. Anytime you have one arm on a wrist, you should be thinking hammerlock. And people simply aren't doing it. So, we'll talk turtle position first. Anytime I'm in a turtle position, guys, I kind of like the eagle of Chanchen, old school, beat the guy down MMA style. There, there's ways of riding back here which a lot of guys do with your shit on top. That's not a bad way of riding from the back. I like one knee in, just getting one in, even if I'm not looking to get hooks, but if I can jam a knee in, do a knee strike, jam it in, and then I can go here, and then you beat the guy down, right? So this is great for MMA, for combatives, for self-defense, whatever. But always getting that far wrist, near wrist position. But anytime I got this, I'm looking at reaping this behind his back possibly, just because I'm going to ride the guy heavy, pushing on his head, grinding on the guy, ride him, ride him, ride him, and I'm going to look at breathing him up and out. Now, here's a hammer lock right there. There's your tap. You know, if, if the ancient Greeks got murals and, uh, and uh, statues of hammer locks, then it's been around forever. We're talking 648 BC. So just in general, anytime I got this, I'm going to look at being able to bring that out to the back. And a lot of times, maybe here and here, we can do this way. And I'm trying to push him, you know, whatever. But then I come out this way. And I'm hammer locking him here. Okay? So what's important is to have that weight control on the guy. Um, there's other, of course, right positions you could be in. Maybe I'm in a uh, crucifix position. He's getting a head inside single. I'm sprawling out of this. Okay? Now, I got that submission right there. I'm going to take it just because it's there. You can look at other videos for that stuff. Uh, maybe I'm going to reap inside this leg, too, and draw this back and use this as a beat down position. Now, this is probably a TKO position, but still, if I can get this far wrist, I might want to think about bringing that out, you know, and switch it off. And even if I bring the guy this way on the side, now instead of up the back, I can do it as an elbow break. So instead of shoulder, I can work the elbow position too. So, um, you know, think about that. Hammer locks, hammer locks, hammer locks. Sometimes even, guys, sometimes I think even one of my, my guillotines from the feet position. You know, I'm a strong guy. I'm a catch wrestler, but I'm up here. But if I can ever get in a position where um, maybe I can scoop in here, I'm getting a guillotine or looking for a cobra neck crank, I got a chin grab, anything like this. If I can do this, boom, I can feed it. Now I can here and break it this way. On the street, I just rip it and break it. Don't give this guy anywhere to go. I can pinch his head from standing even and break it. So anytime someone's reaching around, realize you can feed an arm weave to the other side. So let's say I had something like this, or a crucifix position. Anytime I got something like this, or a guillotine, I might be able to weave this here and break it right here. So I got him pinched, where I could really pinch him like scissor and break right there. Sorry, right? Okay. Um, headlocks. We'll go from the feet. Headlock. Basic. Grace is Jiu-Jitsu one-on-one. You turn the chin in like this. You hide it so if he goes for punches, he punches your forehead. And you grab the wrist to stop the choke a little bit. Or he's getting wrist control. And watch a wrestler from taking you over. So you're going to look for that base and everything. Then you're going to grab here and stuff. Now I'm going to do a little Sistema breaking posture. Wiggle him, break him this way, and when I slide my head out, bounce, sorry, sorry. bouncing position, one arm choke, and chicken wing hammer lock this way. And I bounced for 12 years. Somehow getting ending up in this position, however you get there, is a very efficient way of walking someone out the door. So if you've got the head lock, I'm going to go here. If he starts punching, you can always go for the bicep slow down. But anytime it becomes one arm, or if they're weak, kind of wiggle it and slide out, walk it up, grab control, break the posture. You got it, put that in there. And now I got it, you know, hey buddy, relax. Walk them out the door. And if you need to, you can always work the joints and rip it a little bit. Same thing on the ground. Now I say this a lot because a lot of times in MMA, 
you're still seeing guys getting these dog fights. And sometimes the guys go for a punch and boom, and that punch ends up becoming a headlock. Wow, oh, shit. So you end up in this position. Well, you could use headlocks in MMA and kind of that judo wrestling type thing, but it's not a great position. It really isn't against a good guy. You know, I like the modified with that under the arm. If he was under the arm, pit with an underhook, then he's safe. Now he's in a good position. But if in this headlock position, so many times it just takes people about 20 to 30 seconds to get out. Maybe they get one of these feet in here, and they go, and they go, and they go, huh, and then they go here, and then they take it back, and then they work forever to get the rear naked choke. Now, if you're sliding out, why are you not hammer locking? Anytime there is an arm around your head, if you're going to move your head out, move your body, you should be looking to take that wrist. So, yeah, i got to watch this stuff, right? But if I'm in here, I'm in here, I'm in here, whatever, or, you know, he's going to punch, whatever, even if I use that foot and I combine jujitsu and all this stuff, and if I really want to be technical, I'm going to sh shove my shoulder into his back to create space. See this? So I go here, push it down, and up. This is kind of how I do it a lot of times. I'm going to get that top control, that one arm choke, that one wrist choke with the hammer lock. So that's really how I escape a lot, is I'm not going to, in my theory, look at all my other videos. I don't like to be, especially with MMA gloves, face up, giving him gravity, that chance to turn around and steal the round with ground and pound. I want to be always on top, catch wrestling style, Hicks and Gracie style, whatever you want to look at it as. So even if I come out here, but if you forget that, that's okay. If you do something like this, you know, girl, but still, if you're slipping the head out, think about keeping that wrist and trying to keep it behind his ribs, behind his back, and bringing it up. But really, it should be, it should be here. But really, I'd like it. Here, I'm going to defend, defend, defend. See, here he is now. I'm going to go here, shove my shoulder forward, use leverage and gravity. Here. Work here. Now I could just pin it with my forehead, work on his elbow here, and then take it up the back. I'm going to walk it up the back, small banana motion to the back of the head. So chicken wings, hammer locks, I feel like that's a lot of common positions where people are, are simply just uh, forgetting it. And, and they're available, especially in MMA, and no key grappling as well. Uh, one more, from guard. Okay, from guard, this guy sits on a double wrist lock, aka Kamara. Okay, my defense, anytime someone's here, is going to be not just to flatten him on his back, but stay tight to him and drive in. Drive in and posture, right? Now, if I can, I'm going to dig this hand, little space. Boom. Work that into the seatbelt position. Now, anytime I get the seatbelt position, and this is a great time to get it, of course, I can go for 20 hits TKO to the face. Okay? But if I, people are getting the seatbelt and I'm losing it, the seatbelt should be kill, 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 get a submission, get that catch, win the fight, get the submission of the night bonus. So if he's here, I'm not just going to push him this way. I'm going to drive in at a corner and shove my head up and into this guy and see what it does to him because I'm controlling his body with my head. That makes this hole for this. Then I work it out, work it out. Now we're here, even if he starts turning back into me or whatever, I'm looking at trying to pass this guard now. Even if it takes a minute, it takes a minute, whatever. I hop it over, I tap here. There's my hammer lock. Let's go on one time. Let's see. So here, boom. I don't want it. I don't want, if, you, if it's loose, you can go for the sweaty rip out and punch him in the face defense. That works too. But instead, drive into this guy. And look at it as an opportunity to get this, okay? TKO position, or if it's just grappling, you're going to work. Try and control that wrist and work to pass the guard. Try to turn back in. Even if he's turning back in, I mean, now I can use my fist on the ground. See, so I'm starting to lose it. So if you can come over here and make a fist on the ground, so there's nowhere for his arm to go. I'm not going to make it a muscle battle. I'm going to make it a space battle. I'm taking up the space physically. i got to block. If I can work on passing, boom, then I can re-pick it up here. And then I can come here. You really can't somersault out of this if I put my weight on him in a good way. And there's the hammer lock. Chicken wing, whatever you want to call it. So, 
guys, here at the Highest Sound Academy, we look at submitting all parts of the body. Goker's known for leg locks, it's just because his leg locks are better than everybody else. But, you know, look at the whole anatomy of the body. And it just always killed me. You know, I just saw an MMA fight the other day a couple times. You see that headlock position. You see the people slide their head out, right? How many, all these jujitsu people, they know to slide the head out and get the back. Why not take that wrist with you? Grab that wrist, and anytime that's around your head, take it with you. Anytime you've got a cross wrist or far wrist, think about combining that. Even if you can't rip the arm behind, if you knew how to use your body weight, you could, you should be able to. It's not a muscle thing. But, um, what do you mean? So even if I got this, if I start working on this, right, then maybe he puts his head up or allows you to slide back in on the neck. And then you put your choke in, you know. So by, by threatening, while I go over here, he starts to defend. Well, then I come back to here. You can also work on, from, on this kind of ride, catch wrestling ride. Okay, wrestling ride. Just watch the somersault and all that. But I could beat him down here and get a wrist, get a wrist. I can be in here and look, work on flattening the guy out. Get a wrist, hit him out this way. Well, a lot of times this is pretty common right here. So we're working on the choke, and maybe he's still got good defense or one-arm choke. But there's nothing, there's no rules that say, once you've got a hook in, you can't take your own hook out. I can work that out. And then, come here. Yeah. So I took his hand right out. All I had to do was slide my hook out. Just because you got the back and you got to get flattened out, or even turtle position, doesn't mean you can't take a hook out to look for that hammerlock. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Please sub to my YouTube page. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, go to gocor.com, go to genethebell.com, uh, get his uh, submission, uh, a thousand submission holds book, Gokor's five DVD set on leg locks is great, and uh, I hope you enjoy the stuff from me and look at my arm weave, double arm weave, catch wrestling key lock series, kind of got me thinking about all this stuff. Shit, one more, one more. Not exactly a hammer lock, but I, I'm kind of throwing it out there anyway. Um, in the key lock series, I talked about here, going to the key lock in my last video. Okay, but anytime if you go from here and you happen to end up with one arm, one, one wrist, one arm, uh, one hand on it, you can get the, the, the hammer lock, okay? I can pull it back this way. I like to go to north-south and work it up this way. Um, okay. um, as well as, uh, you, hit, you see me hit it live at the end of a seminar. If you're really cranking a guy on a double wrist lock here, come on, and, and he's sitting up like this, Sometimes you can't finish it. Maybe you can pull it back in, switch it to this though, and then hammer lock that way. Or you here, switch it to this, go back in and come back out, tilt it up the back, hammer lock. Also, besides that little variation with the wrist lock, hammer lock, if you're in here and struggling to get the guy, you can put your weight on it, weight on it, own it, own that wrist, walk it up, walk it up, try to get control of the wrist. Now I got control of the wrist. Not exactly hammerlock. I like pinching the guy and cradling guys. And then if he kicks his legs out to get out of this, I can. The best way to double wrist lock in Kermora is, of course, getting the hand up into the armpit, as well as counter rotation, flexation on the outside. So the last one is simply, if I can get this on the guy, I can come out very easy, or I can pin him. I can work a pin here. Now, Instinctually, he's going to give me some pressure sometimes, and I'll use that to get that lock. And of course, that this last one comes from uh, Go Course class here. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.